All right, I am back and I have gathered. Well, I matched up my quarter points is what they're called. So the two side seams, the center front, center back. And then I pulled the strings and gathered until they fit. So now you can see this is a nice smooth fit across here. And I just check that all the way around. Looks good. We'll try to manage our thread so that we don't get them caught up as we sew. And then I'm going to reset my uh, stitch length back to normal stitch length. And I'm going to sew this on my sewing machine uh, to attach the waistband. But I will come back and serge the edge just because, you know what, I like the way it looks. I like everything to be nice and finished on the inside. So you'll see that I had, um, I don't know what that's, there's a name for that sailor looping around the post. Um, that's what I do to hold my string in place. So here we go. Let's, let's attach the waistband to the skirt. And I'm just going to go right in the middle of those two gathering stitches. And honestly, how I do my gathering, the placement of the gathering stitches, I run the edge of the sewing foot on the edge of the fabric. And then when I come back for the second pass, I run the edge of the sewing foot on the edge of that first row of stitching. Um, if you have other landmarks you like, then, you know, you are in charge of your sewing machine. So you do it how it works best for you and gets you a good outcome. That's really what matters. There's so many different ways you can actually accomplish the same thing that um, I try not to get too stuck on the method people are using. It's all about the result. So, you know, um, when I mention a method, it's because possibly somebody's watching who doesn't know. They don't have a method developed yet. So then um, I share the one I know. waistband does like to sort of wander to the right underneath and that's largely a function of those feed dogs down there. They move the two layers, the top layer and the bottom layer at different speeds and then because there's loft in knit and especially when you've got three, three layers plus gathering, you know, that's who knows how many layers that gets to be. Um, that loft will cause fabrics to slide left to right and so um, every now and then I'm putting my hand underneath my project to pull that waistband back in place. Right now I'm just getting these strings out of the way so I don't drive over them. When I started the, this particular seam, I did drive over them and more than likely I'm going to live to regret that. So I decided how about I do it right. And when you pull them all to the top, then you know where they are, so you won't drive over anybody accidentally. The problem with driving over them is if you happen to actually stitch right in the middle of that thread, then you're not going to be able to pull it out as easily. And so it's not a deal breaker. It's just a making your life easier thing to do. Right now, I actually have about a half inch seam allowance going on, in case you're wondering. And as I go, I have been doing a little bit of equalizing. You see how that's moved over? That was just from me handling the project, not the feed dogs. Okay, should be checking. Make sure everybody's happy under there. We're back to the beginning. Now I will do a small bit of back stitching. Oh, sure enough, see? It's amazing. <laughs> what are the odds that I am going to hit uh, the distance of a string? Apparently, very good because I did on that one. So now, and then of course, that is the one that has to come out because that seam or that stitching is going to show. And so, you know, oh. I actually hit both of them. What are the odds of that? Well, it's a good demonstration. So I'm going to have to fight with them to get them to um, come out. Uh, I don't want them left behind in my project. So that well, will be a good lesson for me to remember this week. Let's just see what this looks like now. 
I'm going to take a look and see where those strings are. <laughs> right there she is. He is stuck. And this is, um, well, I think, yeah, this is where I uh, cut the strings because of the seam. So that's why there's a gap there. Isn't that crazy? Well, anyway, so now we've got that band on, and I'm going to have to do the elastic for the top. And on this one, I think I am going to go ahead, because I've got a seam on both sides, I'm going to do the elastic zigzag and uh, see how that works out. So let me grab the elastic. And um, I believe the elastic is cut just... So first of all, let me measure. My waistband is 22 inches, uh, so... 22? No, 24 inches. And I'm going to, the elastic has been cut at 22, so two inches smaller. I wasn't, well, this is a bigger size skirt, so I'll leave it. But I, I really feel like we might need to make them a little bit smaller. I don't know. We, what we need, us grandmas, we need our grandkids to live close by so that we can have them um, try these on. So I use what's called a mending stitch or a broken zigzag and I have mine set to not travel very far. Um, and I just need to pick it up. Do it again over here. <laughs> it slid backwards. All right. And truthfully, I could just overlap them when I stitch it down to the project. You know, so there's lots of ways you can, like I said earlier, lots of ways you can accomplish the very same thing. All right. I feel like that's probably secure enough given um, the fact that I'm going to zigzag it on. You know, it's going to be pretty secure. There's no one point that's going to have a lot of stress. All right. So, grab my project. Now, hmm. I do think I'm going to load a navy blue bobbin in there. Um, you know, the yellow I had is just going to stand out. And for the elastic, I don't need it to be a feature. Okay. My white top thread's perfectly fine because that is going to go on top of the white elastic. All right, so I'm going to try as best I can to place it directly on that hem area. And I want a fairly relaxed zigzag, so probably 3.5 millimeters wide and um, four millimeters long. We'll see. We'll go a little ways and see what we think of it. Yeah, I think I like that. So now I'm just going to Stretch my elastic. Yeah, it just feels too loose to me. We'll see. I may end up ripping this up. Could also be a function of the elastic. I've got soft elastic. There are some elastics that are really um, strong. So the same length is gonna get you a different behavior. But definitely do not do a tight zigzag because then the elastic will not relax back. And you do need it to relax back. All right. So I think, you know, for me, that's, that's okay. Um, as long as this fits the girl well, it'll be fine. If if it's just a little bit loose, this is going to want to pull down their body and slip right off their hips because little girls don't really have hips. So um, I'm going to try it on a granddaughter and see what that's like. I may go ahead and change that to be 20-inch uh, elastic. And then, um, you know, that'll just gather it up a little bit more. So that is the skirt. 
see if I can zoom away enough for you to see the done product. Let's see. Wrong way. <laughs> there. All right. So that is um, the skirt we just finished. You know, it's pretty straightforward, but it's certainly a lot of fun. Stay tuned and we'll see if I can find somebody to model it for us.